Here we have a GR Lightwing, around 15 years old, and the aircraft has been brought into our factory to be refurbished. So this is the start of uh, what we will attempt to make, a weekly uh, segment on our webpage, which is uh, titled What's Happening at Lightwing, or What's New at Lightwing, or it's titled something like that, uh, in which we'll endeavour to show you uh, updates of uh, things that are happening in the factory. Uh, this isn't particularly exciting, but it's uh, what we're doing at the moment. Uh, Alex has brought his aircraft in to be recovered and repainted and refurbished and also inspected because having done uh, 7,000 hours in this aircraft, uh, Alec uh, wanted to be sure that the structural integrity of uh, both the steel airframe and the aluminium wings uh, was uh, up to scratch. And we have found exactly that. We haven't found a single crack in this aircraft. And keeping in mind that this uh, aircraft, airframe has endured uh, 7,000 hours of the hardest hours that you could possibly have. In other words, it's been used in Outback Australia um, for uh, property inspection and maintenance. It's been landing on rough bush tracks and rough bush airstrips all its life. Uh, but it's stood up extremely well. Of course, during that life it has been maintained. Uh, it's had uh, various uh, features, you know, repaired and upgraded and serviced, of course. But overall, we're extremely happy. This is probably one of the longer hour airframes that we have, other than uh, one of the airframes owned by the Sydney Ultralight Club, which has um, about a similar amount of hours on it, around about the seven, 8,000 hours. Uh, but with, I think it vindicates our choice of this sort of construction, welded steel frame, which some say are a little bit old, is a little bit old fashioned, but um, we love it. It's uh, just uh, simply the strongest way of uh, producing an aircraft. And as you can hear in the background, the sun's coming out a little bit, it is raining in Ballina. We've had some of the worst floods anybody could imagine over the last few weeks. But just looking around the back of the aircraft as well, you'll see Lots of Australia's uh, red dust there from uh, at the back of Burke, so to speak, which is uh, where this aircraft has been used out in central western, uh, western New South Wales, Australia. Um, and of course the inside of the aircraft does get a bit dusty. Also the wings have uh, been uh, being recovered and like the fuselage there is no signs whatsoever of any uh, deterioration or cracking or fatigue and this is entirely due to the fact that the stresses in our airframe are kept as low as possible by using, uh, and that, that's brought about by our selection of materials and also uh, the uh, high strength and the low loads that are associated with our airframe. This is a, a GR aircraft which has of course two struts bracing the wing and uh, as is probably obvious from the video, it's uh, in excellent condition, even though it has done uh, nearly 7,000 hours of flying. It's a bit hard to appreciate the uh, full uh, stylistic value or the gravity of this particular project, but it is something that we uh, find absolutely fabulous. This is our roadie. You'll see this uh, referred to in uh, various other sections of the web page. Uh, this is the front of the roadie, obviously. Uh, where the windscreen will go here, a recess for the windscreen wiper and we guarantee that this will be the most efficient, lightweight, two-seat electric vehicle in the world and I'll make that claim right now. The chassis is being built using uh, purely aircraft technology and it should come out weighing around about 300 kilos. It'll be powered by lithium-ion batteries and a 10, 10 kilowatt motor, electric motor, that will be mounted down the back. It has three wheels, two wheels mounted on the front as you can see from various other parts of the web page and one wheel centrally located in the back of the vehicle. But uh, this is being built by uh, in conjunction with the uh, University of France and we're looking forward to taking it to the roads and presenting it to the public later on in 2009. The, this is a modification to our doors on the GR aircraft. We've simply added a, a small window to Alec Edwards' aircraft to simply increase the view out the window. Alec spends a lot of his time in his aircraft looking out the windows because that's what he uses it for, uh, for property inspection and uh, like activities like that. And so uh, we've simply customised the door to add a small additional window there. 
This is uh, obviously an SP2000 nearing, uh, well, about halfway through completion and uh, this aircraft hopefully will uh, become our demonstration aircraft and we'll be doing a tour around the various flying schools in New South Wales targeting mainly the general aviation flying schools and uh, if you would like to book a demonstration for this aircraft and go for a fly in it later on in 2009 you'd be most welcome contact uh, Shelley, Nikki or Howie or uh, any of the Lightwing team and we'll book you up for a demonstration. It doesn't look like it go too far in it right now but when it's completed uh, trust me it will be a fabulous aeroplane. Some may say this is a, a long overdue modification. Um, some may not say that, but we uh, are just experimenting here with a new styling for our tail. We've always had this uh, rather angular uh, tail on, an, on, uh, on the SP2000, and indeed all the Lightwing series aircraft have had this angular tail. Uh, we've always featured this large dorsal fin because it works extremely well. Um, in a, a side slipping situation or a, a situation where you have a strong crosswind, landing in a strong crosswind. This dorsal fin provides turbulence over the tail or a vortex over the tail which rolls off the angle here and um, almost doubles the effectiveness of the rudder. And I pity those that land in some of the uh, imported European aircraft where they have a very small dorsal fin because this does uh, increase the effectiveness of the rudder hugely, might I say. Now, we're just uh, experimenting with putting small fillets in here just to give the rudder a slightly more stylish and curvy appearance and we believe that the difference that this makes is quite, uh, quite outstanding. Uh, these will be an add-on feature to our existing fleet of SP2000s. We always try and make upgrades um, to our aircraft uh, transposable. In other words, if we bring out an upgrade that we think is a good idea, we generally try and make it uh, so that it can be fitted to past models, which is really not something Holden do when they bring out a new Holden. They generally, you generally have to go and buy a new one to get the upgrades, but uh, we try to apply the reverse of that philosophy. Uh, so this is a nice little fillet. If you have any comments or feedback on that, um, Shell will just uh, pan back there and have a look at that and just take in the incredible beauty of the new line of that tail. We think it's quite, uh, quite exceptional, makes quite a difference. So that will be a feature of all new aircraft. And that pretty much, uh, other than a quick shot into the paint room there where a little bit of history is uh, being uh, played out, uh, Nick is sanding the very first wings that we ever Built at Australian Lightwing. Say hello, Nick. Nick's going to say hello any minute now. And he is sanding the the uh, aluminium pigmented coat uh, of paint on these wings. And these were the first wings that we ever built for any Lightwing. And these were built in 19 about 1984. And they've just been brought back for a recover and uh, a refurbished. So there's never been a better time right now if you, if your aircraft, your GR, excuse me, GA or GR Lightwing is looking a little tired, then uh, it's a good time to book in and uh, we can give your aircraft a recoat and uh, a refabric uh, if necessary and also of course an, a service uh, and an inspection. So have a look at your hour meter. If you're up around the uh, 2,000, perhaps 3,000 hours, it might be time to bring your aircraft in for uh, a good solid inspection. Free coat, perhaps a new coat of paint or a new paint job. We can uh, come up with the wildest paint scheme that you can imagine. And remember Rodney, uh, Rodney who? Nick, what was Rod's second name? Uh, Durant. Rodney Durant, who has taken out two years in a row, Rodney Durant has taken out the best aircraft at uh, Naramite with the paint job, which uh, was jointly designed by Rodney and us, and uh, very carefully applied by Nick, our master painter, and uh, that's won best aircraft at Naramine for 2009 and 2008, much to Rodney's uh, absolute delight, of course. 
we may incorporate a still shot of that uh, in the remainder of this video. So thanks for watching. Hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on at Lightwing. Uh, there are a lot of other things, of course, but uh, please feel free to visit our factory next time you're coming through Ballina. You didn't